Hello everyone, it's Carrie and welcome back to Foiling Friday. You might be looking at this and saying, wait a minute, where's the foil? <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about flock actually. So I guess really it's flock Friday, but we're also going to be doing some foiling as well. I have a bunch of colors of their flock here, the green envy, blue diamond, sunshine yellow, purple punch, think pink, black velvet, and of course the white latte. And that think pink I've already used a little bit of, I'll show you the card on that. I also have some neon flock here in the screaming green, hello yellow, and orange glow. And then a few other of the shorter transfer sheets in the blue sky, ruby red, and emerald green. So I have a lot of colors here to choose from. I don't have all the colors. In fact, they still have more. <laughs> but today I'm gonna try to use all of these so you can see what they look like. On this Think Pink, I, you can see I've already cut some of those out. And I, let me show you that card. It was actually from a crafter party a while back. And it's this one where I use the flock on some strawberries. Look how sweet those are. They're velvety, they're really fun to touch. And I used it on those leaves as well with some of the, the flock that Thermal Web provided in the Crafter Party box. So it's the same scream and green, I believe. And so this was really fun. I also created one using the Flamingo stencil previously, and I wanted to show you that panel here. I inked on the legs with yellow, and then I added the pink flock here just to the flamingos. So I am going to be talking about five of my very favorite ways to use this flock transfer sheet. I got a lot of questions on it, so I'll be answering questions as well. But before we get started, I just wanted to thank ThermoWeb. They are going to be having a giveaway here, and let me show you everything they're giving away today. This is the Shattered Rainbow Glass Foil, the Mystic Rainbow, which is a gorgeous, softer rainbow. They have the Rainbow Foil here as well. And then we also have the Summer Rainbow, which is definitely more of a warm tone rainbow. And then the Gold Shattered Glass, which I guess is the gold you find at the end of the rainbow, right? So stay tuned because I'm gonna tell you how you can win all five of these deco foil tubes in the Rainbow Collection. So I will be telling you how to enter to win that beautiful Rainbow Collection. So be sure to stay tuned, but let's get started with the flock first. First thing that I thought of when I wanted to do this flock was the Build-A-Bear stencil. And one of the questions I got was if I've ever used the loose flock. And yes, I have. This loose flock is something I use sometimes on small little areas of an image like this bunny, for example. I pulled this card out that I had made earlier, but it really didn't have the tail showing. I thought it did. So I'm going to go ahead and make a card using this bunny here from the Sorry I Was Moody stamp set. And I'm gonna show you how to use this flock first of all. So I'm just gonna ink blend the basket weave stencil over this bunny. I'm just being careful to kind of avoid that image so that I don't get anything over that. And then I colored the image with some Copic markers. Now I'm taking some liquid glue and just putting it right there in the tail of the bunny. And then I'll use my tweezers to place some of this loose flock and then just kind of get rid of the excess there and allow that to dry. I do push down a little bit on that to make sure it's stuck all to the adhesive. And there's a look at that flock. See how cute that is on a little bunny tail? It's really cute for small little pieces. But when I wanna do large, large areas like the Build-A-Bear stencil, I like to use the flock transfer sheets and they work really great with the transfer gel duo and the transfer gel blanco so i'm going to show you why you would choose which one over the other when you're doing this flock and answer that question today too while i show you how to use the flock with the gel so let's get started with this stencil now 
This Build-A-Bear stencil is super cute. It has options for you to add different faces and some bows and ears and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is first use the transfer gel over the main image here. And I'm going to be using the Blanco on this. And the reason I'm using the Blanco is because I want to use the White Latte Flock Transfer Sheet. And because I'm starting with a colored cardstock behind it, I want that white transfer sheet to appear more white and not take on the color of the background. So the Blanco really helps with that because the Blanco gel dries white. So that's gonna give it more of an opportunity to be a nice bright white. So you can see I'm really working to make sure I get as smooth of a a result that I can with this Blanco gel. You can see that I missed a portion on the right side and you will see that show up in the final flock transfer sheet when we add that. So I always try to get it as smooth as I can. So I use that stencil pal to smooth out the gel and now I'm gonna go clean off all of my tools. I'm showing you that I pulled a lot of stencils for this class today because once I started thinking about things that I would like to add flock to, a lot of things came to my mind. <laughs> so there are so many things that this would look beautiful with. I had this idea. I wanted to give you a quick look at the difference between using the Blanco gel and using the Duo gel and how it looks different when you add the flock to it. So here I'm going to be adding some Blanco to this cardstock, and this is just a brown cardstock I had in my stash. I haven't yet received the brand new cardstock from Maker Forte that's coming out. It's a gorgeous brown color. I wanted that for this, but we're just gonna have to survive with this brown I've found in my stash for now. But I had this idea of like a Christmas pudding look and so I thought it would be really cool to use this dripping looking stencil with the brown. So I did that in both the Blanco and in the Duo Gel and I'll show you that later. We're going to set these aside to dry. So starting out I'm going to be using the gel on a lot of different stencils and then allowing them to dry and then we'll add all the flock later. So here I've got this beautiful Room on a Broom stencil. I'm using the A2 size for this one and some Grand Canyon ink. And I'm just gonna ink up those broomsticks with the Grand Canyon. You can see I have taped off the actual broomstick portion or the bristles portion so that I can just ink on the broom. And then we'll add the flock to the other portion. So just using a blending brush to quickly add that, then I'll clean off the stencil just a little bit before adding the gel, because I don't want that brown ink to mix in with the gel. So I'll wipe that off, and now I'll tape off the broomsticks and go ahead and add the deco foil. This is the Duo Gel. You can see that I'm running low on the deco foil Duo Gel. I use this a lot. Looks like I'm going to need to be ordering some more real soon. You guys, I did use the rest of this <laughs> today on all our samples. So let's just finish putting that on all the broomsticks. These are smaller areas, so it was easier for me to add that gel. I didn't need to use the stencil pal so much. Just tape that area off and apply with the spatula. And I like these spatulas because they are a little flexible, so they add, allow you to add such a nice layer. Again, I'm gonna go remove this stencil very carefully and then clean off all the tools and we'll move on to the next one. Just a little refresher for you if you don't remember, the Decofoil Duo Gel is called Duo because you can use it with heat or without heat. So this one is really great for using just with running through your die cutting machine. However, the Blanco gel must be used with heat to apply foil or flock, either one. So that's why I have both 
that's another reason anyway. And then of course, remembering that the Blanco dries completely white and opaque and the Duo dries clear. I have here the Hats and Bats stencil and I thought this would be great to use with that black velvet flock. It is gonna look beautiful. I'm using the Duo for this one because the black flock is pretty opaque itself. So you don't really need to help it along with Blanco. And you'll see that I have a variety of these little spatulas or their palette knives. This one is from Ranger and I like this one as well. So I'll just remove that stencil and clear off the edges so I get a nice clean edge. I just take my finger and swipe that along. Now here we have a zig and a zag stencil. And this time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I am going to ink this one on first and then add a different stencil for the flock transfer sheets that we're gonna use. So I've taped this down and I'm gonna start with Grand Canyon again. I love this color for fall, especially when you add it with a few other colors. So I'm going to use the Grand Canyon on the top portion and the bottom portion of this stencil. And you can see that I just taped this down really quickly. I did not use any pixie spray for this one, although it might have helped to use some pixie spray to hold that down. But I did okay and it all worked out in the end. For the center portion, I'm using English mustard ink. Look how pretty those are together. They kind of blend for a little bit of orange in the center too. Now I'm gonna use the spotlight stencil, the pumpkin spotlight. And this is what I want to use for the flock. So I will tape that down. I'm using some Blanco this time with a longer palette knife. And I'm just going to spread that all the way across the pumpkin. And I think I'm gonna use the stencil pal on this one, or actually I got a pretty smooth result just using this longer palette knife. So that's gonna work out just perfectly. So I'll remove that again, cleaning off my tools as I go. If you don't have a sink nearby, you can always put them in a container of water and allow those to soak until you get the chance to clean them off. But I usually clean all my tools off right away. For this one, I'm using a darker cardstock. This is the Eclipse Black cardstock and some Blanco paste. And I want to use some white over this black so that Blanco is really gonna help out on this one. You see I change back and forth depending on what I'm using and what color the cardstock is behind it. For this one, I'm using the Christmas Star stencil. I love this stencil. Again, the Blanco gel is going to work out perfectly for it. And I do use my Stencil Pal on a lot of these. I love getting a nice smooth result. I feel like the end result is a little better that way. For this one, I got a little bit of movement on that stencil, but you're really not gonna be able to see it too much in the end, and I'll show you how it all turns out. Again, I thought I would use that Tessa Dots stencil for some polka dots over a white background this time. I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Since I was already using the Blanco gel, I'm using it again on this one. Although I really don't think the Blanco was necessary if you want to use the Duo for, for a white background on this one. That would work out probably just fine as well. Again, just cleaning off those edges a little bit and setting that aside to dry. I'm now going to move on to this Carlsbad Caverns. And it is a slimline stencil. You can see that it is well loved by me. I use this one a lot. I am going to use the duo on this one and let's see where we get to. This one is a really fun one. I decided to go ahead and ink on the boots section and then also the buckles first. I got a little bit of that English mustard up there so I'm gonna try to disguise it a little more by adding a little more black but you can still pretty much see it. I just wanted to do this to show you uh, that I wanted to add some flock for the fluffy part, and I think this is gonna turn out really fun. The, the fluffy parts don't really line up to do both at the same time if you 
put the boots together at the same time like I did. So I'm holding the edge up so I don't squish the gel on the other one, being very careful. I was able to add them both at the same time though. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm going to just set that aside to dry as well. This one is really a fun one. This is the Elf Yourself stencil. I'm going to ink on the palm tree color first on this one. And then I'm going to go in with some ruby red flock transfer sheets for the second portion. So I always find that inking first is the best thing to do unless you're using a really dark colored flock or you want to color the flock itself. So for this one, I decided to ink the green on first, then add some of that transfer gel. This is also the duo. I'm gonna be using all of this up here and I wanted to just keep on going as long as I could. So that's gonna dry clear and also allow me to use no heat to add that flock transfer sheet when I'm ready. So I'll set that one aside to dry as well. You can see that I just couldn't quit making panels, but this is gonna give you a really good idea for making decisions on what gel to use, what color of background, what color of foil and flock that you're gonna be using. For this one, I decided to stamp on the Ho 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 background stamp first using that same palm tree ink. It's a really pretty green, nice and bright. And I'll go ahead and stamp that down. I'm gonna allow that to dry before adding the gel. There we go. And I'm gonna again use the gel duo. And this is gonna be a really good example of why I probably should have used the Blanco for this one because the gel duo dries clear, it's gonna still show through to that background and some of the products I used with the flock were light products and so that's still gonna show through. So you'll see when we get to that portion how that turns out. This is called Wrapped in a Scarf and I think these layering stencils are so fun to use with the flock or the foil because it's really fun to be able to add just one layer of that accent. And a scarf is usually kind of warm and fuzzy and cozy. So I thought it would be really fun to ink up the first layer, add some Blanco over the top because the Blanco dries opaque, and then add another color of flock over the top of that. So that's what we're gonna do with this one here. I used, as you saw, that beautiful blue raspberry color and then the Blanco gel over the top for the stripes. And as I say, I'm going to try to use every single color of flock. I think I, there was one I missed, so you'll see that. All right, let's get back to this slime looking drippy <laughs> example, which is gonna turn into our Christmas pudding. So here's one I did with the Deco Foil Duo on the left and the Blanco on the right. And you can see that the Blanco dries opaque white, the Duo dries clear. And I'm going to use this white latte flock transfer sheet for these samples. And I wanna show you the difference. So for this first one that is the Duo, I'm gonna cut a piece that's gonna cover over the top of that gel. And I want you to remember that this is a little bit different than doing foiling. There's a fuzzy side, which is this side right here, and that's the side that's gonna go on the gel. And the paper side is going to be face up. So you have to think a little bit differently than when you do foil. So the flock side is going down on top of that gel, and the paper side is face up. And what is gonna happen is we're gonna run this one through the die cut machine because this is the duo gel, you can do that. You don't have to run it with heat. And then we'll pull up that flock paper. Now here I thought it didn't give enough of pressure. So I just added a cardstock shim to that and ran it through one more time. But watch this as we pull this up. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. 
I just use my Big Shot because that's what I can get in the camera. <laughs> As I pull this up, you're gonna see that the flock sticks to that duo gel. And look at that, we have a fluffy result. It's really fun to look at, it's fun to touch. You can see I got a little bit of wrinkling there. I'm just gonna run that through a little bit more so that I get a smooth result here. Now for the Blanco, let me show you the difference in what we get there. So again, I'm gonna cut a piece that fits just over the top of that Blanco gel. And again, the fuzzy side is gonna go down onto the gel, just like this with the paper side face up, because we want that flock to stick to the gel. The Blanco gel requires heat for it to hang on to that flock. I'm gonna again use the same sandwich with my mink. I'm using a cardstock shim, and then I'm using the parchment, uh, the pre-cut parchment sheets here, and running it through my mink. Now this was a thick enough piece of cardstock. I probably didn't need the cardstock shim for this one, but I did use it anyway. I got a really great result, so just wanted to show you this. I ran it through on a level three heat. And as I pull this out, you'll see what the difference is. So this again is the Blanco gel. I'm gonna move that out of the way so that I can reveal this to you. I let it cool for just a little bit here, about a minute, and now it's ready. I'm gonna pull this up and look at that. So you can see a real difference between the flock on the Blanco gel and the Duo gel. See how you can kind of see through the Duo gel, but the Blanco gel gives you more of an opaque white, which I like. I like that one a lot better. So now I also did the Duo gel on some black cardstock, and I thought it would be fun to use this Screamin' Green. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because I have a lot to share and you've seen this before, I wanted to try my foil cutter on this and it did cut nicely. I know I'm gonna get some of you saying you shouldn't be cutting on your glass mat. <laughs> I just wanted to show you that it still works on the flock transfer sheets, but normally I wouldn't do that on my glass mat. I would do that on my, my cutting mat. So here we go, here's the screaming green and this one shows up a little more but again, it's on the duo, so you can see through just a little, that black does show through. So that's what's gonna help you to decide how do you want this to look? Now, I don't mind this green, the black showing through the green. This gives it more of a spooky Halloween vibe. So that's pretty cool. I like the way it turned out. I didn't get to finish my card with this one today because I didn't have time to finish all of the cards. But I think I have about 10 or 12 cards to share with you today, and I'll show all of the results from all of the flock and foil that we do as well. For this one, I'm going to be using the Sunshine Yellow. Anyone, can you guess why this might be one of my favorites? Sunshine Yellow, of course. So the brooms are gonna look great with that sunshine yellow. And then for the neon yellow, which is, what is that one called? The hello yellow. I'm gonna use that on the Christmas stars. So the two kinds of yellow are going to definitely be showcased here. Now this one, I'm going to run through the Meek Machine as well since I have it out. Even though I use the Duo on those brooms, you can use Duo with heat or with your die cut machine. But since this Christmas stars is the Blanco, this one definitely has to be run through the Mink Machine or your laminator, whatever you have, whatever you use for your foiling. You can also use with the flock. So there we go, I'm gonna put that one through. I'm gonna allow the brooms to cool off just a little bit before I reveal those, but look at this. I love how this turned out. Now we're gonna treat this a little differently for these. So I'm gonna show you that, but look how cool. They are so fun to touch. It's a little bit of velvet added to your card. It's, it's just really touchable. It makes it more interactive. <laughs> okay, here's the 
beautiful hello yellow it's definitely more of a neon color and look at the result we got here so pretty so fun so touchable and then that negative piece also you can save that and use that for a background on something else as well so i'm going to show you how to do that as well here is our hats and bats now this is a, a light purple cardstock I believe this is the grape if I'm remembering correctly it might be lavender this one I am using the black velvet flock transfer and I'm running that through my mink as well and then this one with the build-a-bear I'm going to use the white latte on this one and remember we used the Blanco on this one because I used a colored cardstock on the background so definitely want to uh, run that through with heat as well because it's the Blanco. All right, let me show you the hats and bats. Look at how cool this one turned out and I love the negative panel for that as well. Look at this. I'm gonna trim this one down a little because there's some extra, but wait, actually, what if I inked around those edges? I'm using some purple ink from Maker Forte. This is the Sugar Plum ink. And look at how this makes it pop. I love the look of the ink blending. Now you can do your ink blending first and then add the gel and your flock transfer sheets. But since this was the black velvet and it's not gonna show up really any inking over that, you can do your inking second. So that was kind of an afterthought and I love how that turns out. Wait till you see the final cards. Okay, here's the Build-A-Bear and it's soft and it's fluffy. Who wouldn't want a soft fluffy teddy bear for their card? We're not finished with that one yet. I'll come back to that after I finish all the, adding all the flock. So here's the Carlsbad Caverns. Of course I have to do this in black but you could use any color you want. I mean, purple bats would be pretty fun as well. I just couldn't resist. I didn't have a long enough piece to add to that, so I just cut an extra piece for that bat near the bottom, and I'm gonna run that through. And for this pumpkin one, I'm gonna use neon flux. So the screaming green and that beautiful orange glow we're gonna use both of these here. So you can add multiple colors of flock to any one project. I've got uh, the green here for the stem and then the orange flock for the pumpkin itself. I'm just gonna cut a piece just big enough to cover that pumpkin. There we go. And of course, flock side goes down. I will use a little piece of the pixie tape here to keep that in place. That way it doesn't move around when I'm running this through the mink machine. And here we go. I'm going to let that cool off for a minute. Peel off that tape. And look at these results. That green looks great for the stem. And wow to that orange. It is definitely beautiful, bright. I like how this turned out. We will add a little bit of something to tone this down though in just a minute. <laughs> All right, moving on to the polka dots with the Tessa dots, the black one. I think I'll add some of this beautiful blue to this is the sky blue and this is going to look great because I used that Blanco gel. So the blue is a lighter color flock. So you definitely want the Blanco when you're using these lighter color flocks. And then for this one, I'm going to use some of that black flock as well. I just love a black polka dot on a white background. I also love a white polka dot on a black background. <laughs> so I think that's what we're going to do today as well. So I'm going to do all these reveals and we'll turn them all into cards. Look at this beautiful blue on the black. And again, that negative is going to look really great for the background of a card or for another project. Now this one, it looks like I got a little bit of gel coming over or through those dots. So to clean that up, just take your craft knife and a little bit of this will do it. Just scrape that off. You'll get a great look. 
can also use a sand eraser, same thing that I would use for foiling. You can use also for flock, but I found that the craft knife works the best. And I am gonna cut this down just a little bit so those edges aren't gonna matter, but look at that negative piece. I'm gonna use that on a card too. Here's our bats, they are just beautiful and so touchable. Now I wouldn't touch a bat in real life, <laughs> but on this card, with that flock, yes, absolutely. I'm just brushing away some of those extra fibers with my surface sweep, and I found that happened a little more with the black velvet than the others. Well, now let's get back to this Build-A-Bear. So the lighter colors of flock, you absolutely can ink on them. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the flat white all around this bear just to give them a little more dimension. And I realized that on video you couldn't see it as well in real life. So I'm going to ink this on a little darker than I might actually in real life. Because see, look, you can barely see that in the video. So I'm putting this back on. I'm going to over-exaggerate my colors for you today. But I just wanted to show you that you can absolutely ink blend on flock. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. I'm going to show you a couple different examples of this. Now for the face, I'm going to use some ink blending as well. I used some paper to cover the top of that bear because I didn't want to add any tape over the flock because I didn't want to pull any of that flock up. So I added some paper so I wouldn't get any black over the edge there. And I'm just using some Eclip Eclipse Black ink to ink on that face. Look how cute. And now for those ears, I'm gonna use a smaller brush and some Tip Tree Jam ink. We're gonna get a really great look for those ears. Look how cute he's turning out. Now I have this stamp set called Splat Bear, and I'm gonna use that, the sentiment that says, take care, teddy bear. Originally I thought I would stamp it with that Tip Tree Jam, but I didn't love how that was turning out. So I went in with the Eclipse Black instead and stamped that in black. You can see I've already inked up a bow tie with the Tip Tree Jam color. And I'm gonna pop that up on our final card. And up above, you can see that I have already foiled some beautiful wild paper from Maker Forte. Here I am adding that bow tie with some foam tape. But look at that gold, the beautiful gold that's gonna show around the edges. That gold foil is the Maker Forte Sunrise Lake. I think that's what it's called, the Sunrise Lake. And look how gorgeous you get that beautiful gold glinting all around. So the flock and the foil look so great together. And here's gonna be our first simple card that I'm putting together to show you how fun this flock is for a card. And you can see a little bit of that gel that wasn't exactly smooth. It adds a little bit of texture to the bear though, so I was okay with it. For this one, one of the clues is that I'm running it through the die cut machine, so you know that I use the Deco Foil Duo, which means that it is not opaque, dries clear. So we're gonna get a much lighter look on these ones. Here is the red. I think that one looks great though. I don't think it needed the Blanco for that one. And here is the white, and it turned out much more light than I would have liked. I would have liked it to be a little brighter, so I think the Blanco on that one might have been a good idea. Now here is the Santa that we did on the Ho 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 background. I'm gonna switch this up a little bit. I'm using some white flock on the hat and on the beard and so I'm just cutting those to fit also on that little end of the hat there and then I want to use something a little different for the sunglasses so I'm using some black foil sticking that down and then I've got this radiant red foil that is a Gina K foil it's beautiful and so I'm going to use that for the hat itself now with Duo, you can use it for foil and for flock as you run it through the die cut machine. So I thought this might work all at the same time. 
And hopefully you did notice that the pretty side of the foil is face up, but the pretty side of the flock is face down to stick to that gel. So see how you just have to think a little differently. Now I'm gonna pull off this hat and you'll see that I missed a couple spots when I was adding the gel. So no worries, I know you all know how to fix this. You can use your deco foil pen or the deco foil adhesive to just add a little bit more in there and then add that foil back on to fix those. But I didn't mind the spots and look at the sunglasses. I thought it turned out great. Now here's the part I was sad. Because we use the Decofoil Duo, it is transparent. And look, you can see right through the flock back to the background stamp, which is not what I wanted. I wanted it to be covered fully with white. And so here's one of the reasons that Blanco would work way better for this type of application. So look at that, you can see everything still. I don't love it. I don't think that's gonna turn into a card today. <laughs> Here's the scarf and the other drippy piece of that first stencil. I'm going to use some emerald green or maybe this green envy would be better. Yeah, let's go with the green envy. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that for the scarf. And let's see how that looks with the blue raspberry. I think it's gonna be a great coloration. Also, the blue diamond would look so pretty. The blue diamond ended up being the one color that I didn't use today. So anyway, that would be a very good choice here as well. I'm gonna run that through and look at the beautiful result. I love this velvet texture, especially for a scarf. Now here's another way you can use these flock transfer sheets and that's by running them through a embossing folder. And watch this, I, I have these embossing folders and I'm gonna run this one through without cutting it down because I want, I want you to see the difference. So when you run it through the embossing folder, you still get that velvety look, but it compresses it just a little, so it's, more, it's a little more formal, but it still feels really nice, it still feels velvety, and it's fun for a background of a design Here's this one that's called Swiss cheese, I believe. I'm gonna run this through as well and show you what this looks like on the purple, purple punch. So this one I'll cut down to fit right in there. And then, now when you're cutting fl uh, flock sheets, it's best to cut from the back because that has the paper on it and it's easier to cut through without taking any of that flock off of it. So cut it from the back and that will make your cuts nice and sharp and smooth and straight. So I'm just gonna cut this one down to be the size of an A2 card. There we go, that will be pretty for a Christmas card background, I think. All right, let's run this one through now and I'll show you what that one turned out. Now, some of the white did show through on that. I think that could be fixed with a little bit of ink and there you go. So I love that idea of the embossing folders. That is another great uh, way to use your flock sheets. Now here on these brooms, I wanted to add a little bit of shading. So I'm using some English mustard ink and just inking over one side of each of the brooms. And then I'm gonna fussy cut these out. Yes, I am. <laughs> because I wanted to use that beautiful damask background. That is a stamp set from Maker Forte. I embossed that with a little black rainbow sparkler embossing powder. So it's a really fun sparkly background. And with these witches brooms, I just love it. So I'm using some thin foam adhesive here on the broomsticks and it fits perfectly. And if you remove the backing to it, then it's easy to form that in whatever form you want. So see, I'm removing the back here, and now I can bend that around just exactly to fit the back of the broomstick here. Cut that down, and then add another foam square to the broom itself. And that's just an easy way to attach it with a little bit of dimension to that background. I'm using my tweezers here to get that lined up. And I'm going to use a sentiment from the 
this sentiment set here, it says, witches be crazy. <laughs> I'm just going to cut that down and then we'll add a little bit of foil to this one. I think I would like to use one of those rainbow foils from the giveaway. This is the Mystic Rainbow. This is their newest rainbow. And I'm just going to cut a piece to fit onto that sentiment here. And this is, as you know, the toner sentiment. So I like to use a brush that I have set aside just for foiling to brush them off and dust them off so I get a really good foiling result. You can see that Mystic Rainbow is just a portion of the rainbow because it's such a small sentiment. So we're really just getting kind of a two-tone look, but I like the way it turned out. I think it's really pretty with that black sparkly background especially. Here we go. You can see that result there. Now I'm just going to cut this down a little bit. I had a piece sticking out and then I'm going to run around the edges with a black felt tip marker. And we'll add that just to the card like so. You can see I also added some English mustard cardstock and some Eclipse black cardstock to this right and the left side. So I've got a couple mats there of cardstock colors. Here's the scarf. And one thing I love about the scarf stencil is it comes with that mask. So I'm going to put that right over our flocked scarf. And then I'm going to use this cable knit stencil to add some cable knit detail to the background. This new color, Fresh Prints, is really pretty. It's a beautiful green. You can ink it lighter or darker. So here I'm inking it kind of in a light shade. And then I'm going to go over it with the second stencil to complete that cable knit. And I'm inking this one up a little bit darker. So it's a really fun bright green, but it's beautiful for Christmas if you like the lime green look. And it's beautiful for these bright colors of the scarf. So you can see I'm just adjusting that stencil over because it was a slimline stencil. That doesn't stop me from using it on an A2 card. I'm going to go ahead and just add a few gems here. These are some dark blue gems. And then I also picked out a sentiment from that same sentiment set, the all season sentiment that I went ahead and foiled in a green as well. And it says, happy freezing season. For this Christmas pudding, I'm going to use these stamp sets here, one from the Holly Berries, and I'll use that Holly Berry stamp. And then this one is from Christ and Christmas. I'm going to use that beautiful Merry Christmas sentiment for this one. So I stamped out those holly berries and now I'm using some of the deco foil adhesive just to add to the berries so I can add a little bit of a little touch of red foil to to this card. I really like the look of flock and foil together. I bet if you wanted to use flock, you certainly could as well. For this elf, I'm going to finish this off using Fresh Prints ink around the edges as well. That'll give it a bright green, happy look to that. And then for the sentiment, I'll pull one out in just a minute. But first, this has already dried. So I'm going to add, see how I have a, a scrap piece of that same red foil? I'm just going to use that for the berries here. So I'm going to just press it on using my bone folder. I missed a spot right there in the center. I'm going to go ahead and fix that just by pressing that down a little bit harder. And there we go. I missed a spot there too. It's easy to fix though. So there's our red berries. And I'll just go ahead and fussy cut this and attach it to our card here. I've already white heat embossed that Merry Christmas. And I think that is a really fun look. For this fancy dress party, I had to use one of those ghosts. And look at this cute cat and that cute little girl. I'm going to use these for a couple of our cards today. But first, I'm going to stamp out one of those ghosts. And I think this is going to look so cute. It definitely needs a face, though. There's a bunch of different faces for you to choose from. I wanted this one with the big eyelashes. 
and I'm just going to color it up with a little bit of Copic markers. I'm also stamping down the Have a Beautiful Day, and that's going to be our sentiment for this card. I went ahead and added some clear heat embossing to that so that I wouldn't smear it when I added some ink. So there's our little ghost. You can see I colored it up with some gray markers and a little bit of bright green to match this Fresh prints ink. And I'm inking that on over the sentiment. And now I'll just cut that out and add it to the card. I love the velvety touch of this background. I mean, I just, uh, I love this card. Here's another way to use some flock on your projects and that's with this foam adhesive sheets. I'm gonna cut it out with the high sentiment word die. And so I'm just cutting a small piece so I can run that through my die cut machine and cut out the H and the I. And then I've got a spare piece of this white flock here. I'm gonna pull off the front part of that release paper, add the flock. I'm just gonna run that through my die cut machine and then I'll pull that off and the flock sticks right to this adhesive on the foam. And I'm gonna use it here again, but it didn't cover the entire eye. So I'm just gonna peel that off and put another piece of the flock right there, pull that up and no one's ever gonna know <laughs> that I didn't have a full piece. Now for some more ink blending, I wanted to make this look kind of like a candy cane. So I'm using English Mustard and Red Luster ink and just inking that right on the flock. Isn't it fun to know that you can make your own colors of flock just using some inks if you wanted to? So this turned out pretty cute. I really like the candy cane look and we're gonna use that on a card. I did cut out the shadow for this high with some cardstock and we'll put that on in just a minute. You can see that I've got that started over there. For this pumpkin, I'm adding a little bit of shading to the edges. I put that stencil right back over the top so I wouldn't bother that background. And I've taken some Grand Canyon ink just to make that a little more shaded on the edges. I've got this cute little gnome from the new stamp set called Fall Gnomes. They are holding a bunch of different items. This one has some pumpkin pie. There's one up above that has a whole pie, one that's holding a pumpkin. And then I took that Hello Pumpkin sentiment from the same stamp set and stamped that in the Grand Canyon color of ink and then just added that as the sentiment. So this is gonna finish off this simple fall card as well. That's so cute, that little gnome. So I'll attach that right there. And there we go, there's one of our fall cards for today. Now let's move on to this one. So here is the inked on flock that we did. It's on that adhesive foam. It's got adhesive on both sides. So you can just peel the back off now and add that to the shadow piece, which I cut with Eclipse Black paper. And I'm going to use the piece that we made black polka dots on the white cardstock. I cut this down just a little bit. We'll add that high and then I've got the cat and that little witch that I've already colored up with some Copic markers and we'll attach those with some foam tape. I'm just gonna use my tweezers to place those where I want them so my fingers are out of the way. There we go. And then I'll just add that to a card base. So you can see there is a white border all the way around since I cut that panel down just a touch. So that'll finish that cute card there. I love that flock for a little bit of interest as well. So it's on the sentiment and it's on the background with the polka dots. Here's our bats and I need to ink up this background. I didn't know what I wanted to do with this for a while so now I'm thinking we need some greens here. So I brought out my Lime Wired and Cotswold Green and I'm gonna start inking around, just bringing it on nice and slow. And then I'm going to continue to ink back and forth, back and forth until I get the look that I want to. 
And then I'm going to bring in a darker color with the tartan teal. And this is going to get inked all around the edges. So we've got green, so a lime green into a darker green into a blue green. So I'll just keep inking this. And I know I'm a little bit off camera. I apologize. This is a slimline card. So it was hard to remember to keep it all in camera the entire time. And you can see I got an extra splotch of ink right there. That just means I'm going to keep inking it until it looks good. I've got one of the splatter stamp backgrounds. This is the series number two in the series. And this one has kind of less of the dots, I guess. So they're more spread out is what I mean to say. So I love this one for backgrounds as well. So I wanted to use this one and I'm stamping off a couple of times onto this background. So you can see I st stamp off onto the maker's mat, then I stamp a couple of times onto that panel and we get a really fun background look. Those splatter stamps are perfect for this. So here is what it's turning out to be. And I'm adding a sentiment that says something wicked this way comes. I left that one black. You could certainly foil that if you wanted to. But I just liked the black with those black flocked bats. They're so velvety. They're really fun to touch. Like I say, it's a new interactive design element. So let's go through all the cards we've made today and I'll show you all the panels and we'll talk about that giveaway. Here's the one with the hats and the bats with a black velvet background as well. I loved making these Halloween cards. I know Halloween's coming up so fast, but these are just fun, simple ones you can make and that flock just adds a little something deeper to these cards. I, I love it. So here's another one I made. I used that background and then I used the new stamp set called Happy Haunting for those images. I just colored those up with some Copic markers and that Your Fabulous is from the same stamp set. I just white heat embossed it onto some black cardstock and then I use that negative polka dot piece there. Here's the Hello Pumpkin that we inked on a little bit around the edges and that looks so great with the orange and the green as well as on that, that little gnome. Here's our witches brooms. Really fun to touch these ones as well. I can't even tell you, I had such a great time figuring out what to flock when I was doing this video. Here's another card that we did with that hello, the teddy bear, the uh, Build-A-Bear stencil. And he's so cute. And there's a little bit of foiling on that background with one of the Maker Forte foilable paper packs. Here's our scarf, happy freezing season. That cable knit background and that was uh, using a two, two piece stencil. And then of course our Christmas pudding. Merry Christmas. And then here's another two tone that we did with the red. I added some gems and that sentiment is from the Rustic Christmas Wreaths stamp set. That's a really cool believe. Here's our flocked strawberries that I showed you earlier. And then of course the flocked bunny tail that I used the, the loose flock on. I think would also look cute on these bunnies, the ones that look like peeps. So I wanted to show you that as well. So many cards. So many cards today. And then of course, lots of leftover backgrounds. This one that I did not love with the Decofoil Duo, but maybe it's fixable. I might have to work on that. Then the embossed flock. That would be really fun. There's our flamingos again. I still need to turn that one into a card. There's another polka dot with the sky blue. So pretty. And then also we've got some leftover gnomes. Maybe I'll use this one on that card. Then, of course, more of these ones. I did quite a few. And there's the Christmas stars with the beautiful neon yellow. 
the bats negative piece there's the boots i i think that one is going to look really pretty with a plaid background so i'm planning on that then of course we've still got negative pieces lots to still turn into cards but i hope you were excited and happy to learn about this flock how to use it how it's different from foil different ways to apply it cut it color it and use the negative leftovers I think this would also look so pretty with some of these stencils. If you've seen this one from the Hedgehog Hollow Kit, I think it was from last month. I made a card with it, but wouldn't that look cool with Flock? If, I, if only I had time to just sit and play and play and play. I love it. I think a bee, Flocked Bee would be really awesome. And then of course I had all these other stencils out for uh, flocking ideas. Snowflakes, of course, would be gorgeous. Oh, and I can't wait to do this one with the tire treads and this one with the the fire, maybe a pine cone. Some more of these would be really fun to flock as well. I hope you enjoyed this look. Now, if you, oh, also, flocking on these witches hats, oh, using it on this background, I, yeah, that's, that's so cool. You can use it as a sorting hat too. Okay, I can't stop. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this look at all of these samples and all the ideas for using flock. Now, if you want to enter the giveaway for the five tubes of the rainbow foil, including the gold shattered glass foil, which are, which is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous foils, then please leave a comment on this video. Not during the live, if you're here for the live, then wait until this video posts and leave a comment on the video after it has posted. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up as well, but leave a comment and let me know if you have ever used Flock and which of these cards is your favorite or let me know your ideas for what you want to use Flock on. We love to hear your ideas. We love to hear your comments. So leave a comment and let me know. Favorite card and if you've used Flock or what you would want to use the Flock on. And we'll enter you to win in that foil giveaway since this is Foiling Friday. And we will announce the winner and contact you within five days of this video posting. So here's the colors again, just to remind you what that giveaway is and a thank you, a very big thank you to Thermoweb for their generosity. I love that we get to do this giveaway for Foiling Friday. We may have it, we may have one coming up next month too. So keep your eyes open for that. Thank you so much if you join me today on the live, but don't forget to leave a comment after this post the winner will be chosen from those comments and contacted that way. Here's a few still photos of all of our projects today, just to remind you some of the things that we made and maybe remind you which one was your favorite. There we go, all of these cutie cards. I had so much fun today. I hope to see you next month at our Foiling Friday. We do these every month and we just love to see you every time. Remember to also leave me your questions for any foil questions or flock questions that you might have. I try to get to them all and we will see you next time at Foiling Friday. Bye-bye.